When a woman embarked on a vacation to inter beauty and the surrounding region of Spain, her expectation was to enjoy a few serene and relaxing days. Unfortunately, her plans took an unexpected turn when she encountered difficulty crossing a river, leading to a near-drowning experience. Desperate for help, she let out a scream, and surprisingly, a powerful wild bear intervened. This incident highlighted the complex relationship between wild animals and humans that has existed for millions of years. As humans expanded their settlements worldwide, coexisting with wild animals became a delicate balance. Although encounters between humans and wild animals had the potential for disaster, most of the time, both species maintained a respectful distance, allowing for a peaceful coexistence. Despite some animal species posing inherent dangers to humans, efforts have been made to protect and preserve them. Numerous cases showcase instances where animals in distress approached humans for assistance, with humans often coming to their rescue. However, the narrative poses an intriguing question, what if the roles were reversed, and humans found themselves seeking help from animals? This pondering became a reality for a woman named Elena during her vacation in Cantor. With a long-standing desire to explore the beauty of the region, Elena dreamed of camping in lush forests, strolling along golden beaches, and immersing herself in the pristine rivers, streams, and crystal-clear seas. Little did she anticipate that her interaction with a wild bear would prompt reflection on the reciprocity of assistance between humans and animals. Elena's love for wildlife extended beyond mere appreciation, it drove her to study animals passionately. When not engaged in her regular work, she dedicated her time to volunteering at the local animal shelter, assisting creatures ranging from cats and dogs to large predators like lions and tigers. Her heart swelled with fulfillment as she played a part in helping animals in need, and her unwavering commitment to this cause became a source of immense pride. Driven by her passion, Elena ventured into the forest during her vacation, setting up camp and enjoying a satisfying meal by the bonfire. Filled with contentment, she decided to explore the enchanting wooded area, which exceeded her expectations in beauty. Along the way, she encountered a chamois, a native animal she had never seen in real life. Little did she know that danger lurked around the corner, and her dream wildlife watching trip would soon transform into a nightmare. As she strolled, Elena reached a sizable river cutting through the heart of the forest. Although it appeared challenging, there were rocks that could serve as steps for crossing. While such a feat might have been manageable in her youth, the passage proved more daunting with age catching up. Determined, she embarked on the journey, jumping from rock to rock. Unfortunately, on the third jump, disaster struck. Her foot slipped on the wet moss, her leg twisted, and she plummeted into the cold river. Despite the warmth of the sunny day, the water's icy chill, sourced from the hills and mountains, left Elena breathless upon resurfacing. The cold paralyzed her body momentarily, rendering her unable to move for a few tense minutes, even in the midst of the tranquil surroundings. In those agonizing moments, water filled Elena's lungs, and she coughed and sputtered in panic. Desperate to escape the river's current, she reached for the rock she had fallen from, hoping to pull herself to safety. However, the swift flowing water had other plans, sweeping her downstream without her realization. Struggling to keep her head above the water, Elena felt the cold creeping into her arms and legs. Shivering and screaming for help whenever she could catch her breath, she found herself alone in the forest. As Elena continued down the river, debris in the water tore at her clothes and cut her skin. Though the frigid water dulled the sensation of pain, she attempted to swim to the shore, hoping to find a standing position. Unfortunately, her arms and legs refused to cooperate, allowing only feeble movements. With her life flashing before her eyes, she believed her fate was sealed, anticipating her body being carried out to sea as the river flowed into the ocean. However, an unexpected turn of events unfolded. As Elena fought to stay afloat, the trees along the riverbanks began to creak and move. Suddenly, some of them grew to gigantic proportions. Figures appeared on the shore, observing the struggling human. Elena, already frightened by the violent nature of bears, was even more alarmed by their infamous reputation. Despite her love and respect for large animals, facing one in the wild, 
especially in a life-threatening situation, was not something she desired, especially in a region where approximately 300 brown bears roamed. Brown bears, powerful predators atop the food chain, evoke both awe and fear. Their massive teeth and formidable claws make them efficient hunters capable of subduing almost anything in their path. While their primary diet consists of nuts, berries, fruits, leaves, and roots, their demeanor can vary from surprisingly friendly when in a good mood to deadly when angered. In this dire situation, Elena, if she had the strength, would have attempted to shout at the bear, aiming to intimidate it and drive it back to the forest. She recalled a previous encounter with a brown bear, where its sheer size had left a lasting impression. During that encounter, the bear had to be tranquilized so the animal shelter could address its injured paw. Elena had touched the unconscious animal, marveling at its enormity compared to her own small and insignificant form. The bear, drawn by Elena's desperate screams, approached the river, staring for a prolonged moment before entering the water and swiftly swimming towards the drowning woman. Overwhelmed and weakened, Elena couldn't summon the strength to swim away or defend herself. As she ingested more water and lost consciousness, the bear, with a gentle yet powerful grip, grabbed her body. Elena, clinging to its long, wet fur, hoped for salvation, but her weakness proved insurmountable. She succumbed to unconsciousness. Upon regaining consciousness, Elena found herself lying on the riverbank. Cold and pallid, the sun's warmth provided some relief. Coughing forcefully, she expelled a considerable amount of water, signaling a precarious escape from the clutches of the river. A few meters away, Elena noticed the bear, its gaze inquisitive as if checking on her well-being. Initially gripped by fear, she soon realized that the bear harbored no intentions of harm. In fact, it became clear that the brown bear had been her savior, pulling her from the water and placing her safely on the shore. It lingered nearby, attentively ensuring she was breathing and would recover. As Elena rose slowly, she observed the bear closely, contemplating the unexpected turn of events. In that moment, she pondered the concept of karma. If she believed in such a principle, this act of kindness from the wild bear might be seen as repayment for the countless animals she had aided and rescued over the years. The bear, as if indifferent to the profound impact of its actions, stood up, turned, and ambled back into the forest. This encounter was a singular and life-changing experience for Elena, a remarkable event that she would carry with her, forever grateful for the bear's intervention that saved her life. Let's continue. Once upon a time, as a child, Bogdan lived with his mother in a big city. But then his mother became seriously ill and was hospitalized for a long time. The boy had just finished first grade at the time. Neighbors took him in at first, but when the mother was diagnosed differently, it became clear she would be hospitalized for more than a month. For the boy, his grandfather came from Altai, 30 kilometers from Biesk, and brought him back to the village. After being discharged from the hospital, Bogdan's mother also moved there. They settled down in an old house, where Bogdan has lived since then. His grandfather was not only a hunter but an old school one who never took more from nature than he or his family needed. He doesn't set traps, he just shoots with precision. And always asks forgiveness from the forest and the animals that become his prey that he often takes Bogdan to the forest, teaching him to love it, feel its breathing essence, and treat it with care. Only one who respects the forest deserves her respect. The grandfather said to the boy as he sat by a small tree. Don't offend the forest, and it will never offend you. If possible, it will help you one day. We part of this world. Only when we realize this will our lives be completely different. Always remember this, Bogdan. He remembers and always respects his grandfather in the pact, especially in his adulthood after. The boy was gifted from an early age, he drew to perfection and was a born artist. His mother and grandfather always encouraged his desire to paint. They bought him brushes and canvas from the city. As he got older, the guy added his passion for photography to his painting. He bought a nice but second-hand camera with the first money he made, and started disappearing in the forest for days. As a hobby, but also as a hunter like his grandfather, 
this guy didn't lose sight of his passion for the forest. The young man knew the forest well, knew every secret path, and in his wanderings in the remotest places he often found traps set. Often there are carcasses of animals. Bogdan disassembled the trap and took it with him before disposing of it. As a child, the grandfather showed his grandson where the farthest forest mouth was. The guy clearly remembered the way there, and it was somewhere on the shore of the beautiful lake. From a bird's eye view, it's definitely round. Yes, such a miracle of nature is in the taiga. A shore cottage surrounded by forest is this guy's dream. This summer, he decided to do whatever it takes to make his dream come true. Armed with all the necessities and drinking water, he embarked on a long journey, spending three days in the forest. Leaving home at dawn to walk the road to the land of his dreams. He loves these paths where he is alone with nature. He likes the silence of the forest. Far away in the forest, there is a feeling of complete harmony that is particularly unique and not everyone understands. At this time, he suddenly heard some unusual sound in the forest. Something that breaks the conventional picture of the world, something that cries. He stops and listens. There was silence at first, and then a muffled groan. Bogdan followed the sound cautiously. Several times he had to stop and listen again, trying to get his bearings, because at the end of a small clearing he saw a wolf, a large gray beast, lying under a mass of broken branches. His front paws were clenched tightly by steel teeth. The wolf had stopped beating, just stood there quietly. Sometimes he straightened his whole body and took a deep breath. Bogdan became confused. Collecting traps in the forest is one thing, rescuing live wolves from them is quite another. He never did that. And he had never seen such a fearsome predator so up close, but he couldn't leave and let the animal fend for itself. The guy knew he had to. Suddenly, the wolf trembled all over, and looked straight at the guy. Bogdan saw a great pain in him, as if it had been struck by lightning. He put down the equipment in his hands and began to slowly approach the lying beast. In his hand he held a thick club that he could use, but only as a tool to make room for the steel-toothed trap. He held the stick close by and pressed the lever at the same time, feeling the force of the steel teeth opening and the tension of the beast's body, ready to break free at any moment. Finally, the trap opened. Immediately the wolf rushed out, and limped into the woods. The guy threw the stick and was very afraid that the wolf would attack him. His face was wet, and cold sweat broke out on his back. The young man decides not to test fate any more and returns home. If everything doesn't work out well, then luck will not be on his side. I'll come to the lake next time. He decided. About six months had passed since that memorable incident in the forest, and the guy had returned several times to the place where he first encountered wolves. But since he freed the wolf, he has not seen any other traces. He really wanted the animal to be healthy and the bones to hold together. Afterwards, he decided to share his photos of the incident and the lake with Photographer Magazine. Promising to pay good money, he packed his things and equipment as usual, and went to the forest to meditate. It's small, but hidden deep in the forest, it's out of sight. Usually fishermen come there, but only those who are familiar with the forest and are not afraid of confusion. In early spring, there is no one here, only my grandfather's hut stands alone on the shore. The guy filled the stove to keep warm, took a quick bite, and decided to work around the lake every season, discovering beauty in a different way. He suddenly wanted to shoot to the other side of the water bank, so that guy stepped into the ice. With the camera in hand, he walked up to the mirror and started taking pictures of the lake from different angles. Bogdan had almost reached the middle of the lake, and he took more and more pictures. Suddenly, with a slap under his feet, he realized that he was falling into the icy water of the lake. He grabbed hold of the ice with his hands, but cold water poured from his boots and began to drown him like a rock at the bottom. The last thing he remembered was a certain shade of gray on the shore. And then darkness, total darkness, when he woke up, he was already on land. At this time, something hit his sleeve and gently licked his face with his tongue. 
The guy opened his eyes and saw a wolf beside him, but his vision was still blurred. She's a wolf, staring into Bogdan's eyes before he punches his nose in his face. He tried his best to bring this guy back to his senses, so as not to let him pass out unknowingly again. It's a hut that isn't too warm, but fortunately it's very close. The young man got there and stood up. But fell down again. The wolf saved him. The wolf still sits on the shore. After some time, after the wolf got very close to him, the wolf warmed his body, and Bogdan felt much better. After that, the wolf helped the man reach his house. At this moment, Bogdan remembered the teachings of his grandfather.